Hello and welcome. Thank you for uh, joining this presentation today. My name is Emilie Perroquin and I am the Global Director for Advanced Support for Evident, formerly Olympus. Today I'll talk about uh, phase currents imaging for flaw detection. So here's the agenda for today. First, we're going to talk about FMC and TFM, a quick overview of the methods. We will talk about the issues to be addressed when we are uh, talking about TFM. Then we'll cover the notion of coherence. We'll talk also the basic principles for phase current imaging and why a noise uh, becomes important when we talk about uh, PCI. Then uh, the second part of the presentation will be uh, about uh, actual experimental results on different types of flaws. Uh, so we have uh, some HTHA results, ERW or electric resistance welding, H2S uh, damages or uh, stepwise cracking, and uh, finally some uh, weld flaws as well using uh, phase current imaging. But first off, as mentioned, a quick review uh, that is always needed for FMC and TFM. So what is FMC? FMC, when we talk about it, uh, it's always about the acquisition side of the strategy. So how do we acquire the data? So first is the element that is uh, transmitting. So the first element of the probe will be firing. And then all of the other elements from that probe will be listening or receiving. And then we go to the second element and we do the same again until we've covered all the elements from the probe. Uh, and with that, we generate a matrix of elementary A scan. So that's where the name uh, full matrix capture comes from. So all of the A scans that are possible for that given phase array probe are present in the matrix. Now, when we talk about TFM, that's really uh, the imaging, imaging side of the equation. So how do we want to look at that uh, really great amount of information? So what we're doing is that we tell typically the equipment, I want to look at either the longitudinal, longitudinal, or LL information, or TT, or 3T, or 4T to image uh, this defect in my zone of interest. So what we do is we call uh, something that we call delay and sum uh, processing, which is applied to the a, uh, all the elementary A scans. Uh, and uh, we use the expected delay uh, for a selected mode of propagation or selective wave set uh, to a specific position in the TFM zone. So uh, again, we create a zone. And so for every pixel in that zone, we're going to take uh, the delay and some that are relevant for the mode of propagation that we ask. So again, LL, TT, uh, 4T, or, and so on. So once this is completed for every pixel in the zone, this creates one TFM image or one TFM frame. And of course, this is going to be repeated uh, if we do a, a encoded acquisition for all the scan position uh, in the scan length. So uh, TFM and PCI now. So PCI is also uh, a technique based on FMC data acquisition. So the difference between the two is that, uh, again, here we're representing the same, uh, same principle with element K and L to uh, look at this pixel in the region of interest. So TFM will express it in this fashion where we're looking at the amplitude of the signal for all the elementary A scans. Using the Hilbert transform, uh, we can also look now at the phase for that same signal. So we have the amplitude information, but we also have the phase information for all of those elementary A scans in our FM, uh, FMC matrix. So what is phase grants imaging? So as I mentioned earlier, so every signal has a, a, an amplitude, as we see here, and a phase, so going up or down uh, the axes. And so um, what we the, the, the main difference with PCI is, again, that we are looking at the phase information rather than the typical amplitude information that we are very used to look at uh, when we uh, are looking at conventional TFM or uh, phased array. 
So just like TFM, again, since it is FMCM formation, we can also choose all the different wave sets that we need, either LL, TT, 3Ts, and so on. The signal is treated, so only, again, the phase information will be uh, kept. And so it is what we call an amplitude-free signal. And uh, the, the uh, image is then created using phase currents, and which we'll look at uh, what this means a, a little bit later, rather than the sum of the signal uh, of amplitudes. This is a statistical uh, analysis, or a st statistical approach, uh, based on the frequency distribution of the signal, which we'll look at uh, also what it means uh, in just the next slide. So uh, here, what, uh, what we're representing is a typical TFM. So again, going on the TFM overview, what we would do is we would create a zone of interest over this arc of side holes and uh, generate, you know, the, looking at the amplitude of the signals. So what we can see uh, from that, uh, that image is that, of course, as time goes or as depth goes, uh, we are losing a little bit of intensity or losing amplitude here uh, on the image. This is normal, same for PAUT. As we go deeper in a component, a lot of things can, uh, you know, we'll have some attenuation and uh, the, the amplitude will decrease over time. So it's not a consistent, uh, of course, all the, the side drill holes are the same, but when represented in an image, the intensity uh, is not going to be the same everywhere because of that attenuation. So a lot of things can uh, affect the amplitude. So as I said, uh, attenuation being one, diffraction, transmission and reflection coefficients, uh, geometry attenuation also. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of different things that can affect uh, our amplitude uh, for, for TFM or PAUT. So often what we do to bring back or to find that uniformity or that consistency in the signal is that we adjust for attenuation. So something like a TCG or time-corrected gain uh, or an automatic gain control, that depending uh, you know, of what, what we use. But all of those are a calibration trying to put a little bit more amplitude uh, or a bit more gain when we lost that amplitude uh, in the material. The problem with this is that it can be uh, tedious to achieve, of course, especially with the TFM, because we're looking at a very large amount of A-scan, typically applying the TCG only on a set synthetic A-scan that was selected for that group or that column of A-scan. So it's not exactly the same as what we would do with phased array. Uh, so it can be tedious, and again, it is rely, uh, it's relying on uh, the user, so it can always induce uh, error in our, our setup. So now the notion of coherence. Uh, so we are looking at uh, three indications here, and the way that we represent it is uh, either in amplitude or either looking at the phase. So again, amplitude, as we see, the three indications will decrease over time. Uh, here, when we are looking at the phase, we are keeping those three zones or what we call the coherent areas that are still very um, similar from one to the other, right? And so we can also see where the noise is at. Uh, so the difference between noise and uh, which are the non-coherent air areas in the coherent areas where the indications are, is uh, very easy to see here. So the statistical approach that we talked about. So if we use this same sample with the three, um, three indications in uh, where we can have a randomized process where the N uh, is just a very large amount of, uh, uh, of samples, so it always uh, would generate a much larger variance, as we can see on the red histogram here, as we have a very randomized um, result for all of the noise area. So they all differ from one to another, especially as we use a very large amount of uh, signals, like we do with uh, the FMC. 
and where the areas where there was uh, actually something or a, a reflector, a relevant indication, uh, there is a very low variance in when we repeat, even on a very large amount of uh, samples, a very large amount of A scans. Uh, so that's how the PCI can differentiate, again, between what is relevant and what is just noise uh, coming or information. So we are now left with two main areas again, uh, the coherent areas shown in the uh, green or light green here, as we saw earlier. And uh, in the, the red, the uh, non-coherent areas where the noise is. So what's interesting here is that it's somehow the non-coherent or the noise that helps differentiate from the coherent signals. So in other wor words, uh, if the, the, there's a total absence of noise, if the material is, is really uh, not noisy, uh, the non-coherent area would not have such a large variance. So we really are using that noise uh, to be able to understand what is relevant from what is not relevant. So a certain amount of noise will be very important with this technique, which we'll look at a little bit earlier, uh, later, I'm sorry. So here again, same histogram that we're looking at showing the high variance and the low variance. So this is what I'm talking about when we say that noise is important for this technique. So of course, here we're looking at uh, something pretty noiseless. Uh, so a calibration block with a very round, perfect side drill hole. Uh, so for conventional TFM, we're having a good, good result. But for uh, face currents TFM, so here again, you know, the, the, not being able to differentiate what is actual noise that is non-relevant and what is the indication uh, it makes it much harder for this technique uh, to, to have a good result. As soon as we add a little bit of noise or that the material becomes a bit more grainy, uh, then we can see again that uh, it, it increases, uh, we have a, a better signal to noise ratio. So again, if this was a scatterer or something a little bit more uh, like a, a crack or uh, something with uh, that can create more diffraction, better than a side drill hole, uh, that, that could uh, also improve our results, which we'll look at in just a little bit. So on the left, standard TFM, amplitude-based, uh, where uh, the signal is degrading over time, uh, as we saw earlier, here again, almost no, uh, no more amplitude or very little amplitude, even if it's the same size side your holes. And on the right, the phase current uh, image. So keep in mind that uh, with this image that amplitude is no longer of importance. So we have, we have the same color palette, but we're not looking at the amplitude information. It's similar to a, a time of flight diffraction technique or top that we're only interested in the phase of the signal, but now we can image it. So um, as mentioned earlier, uh, unlike conventional TFM, Phase current is conditional on the noise level. So again, here, this is a very clean calibration block, with very clean side drill holes. Uh, so this is maybe not where this method would uh, show its benefit or shine as much. But as we look into actual, uh, actual defects in actual parts that have been in service and therefore a bit more grainy, uh, we, we will be able uh, to see the benefits. So here's an example. Uh, we have uh, PAUT and TFM and uh, PCI here. So PAUT, TFM, PCI. And this is an ID crack of 5L64 uh, with an 832 uh, probe. So uh, the crack origi originating from the inside diameter. And uh, so the material being a little bit more grainy, as we can see the difference between uh, both the PAUT and the TFM versus the PCI uh, signal to noise ratio, because again, uh, it performs a bit better when there's more, uh, more noise. 
So both PAUT and TFM were able to detect the crack, of course, and image the, the tip diffraction uh, on a TT mode, but the PCI was able to see all diffraction from that uh, crack facet. So with using uh, also the TT mode. So we're not having to do another mode like 3T to understand that this is uh, actually a crack. And so uh, here, maybe we saw the very strong uh, corner trap, a little bit of tip diffraction. Maybe we are thinking it's two different indication, but of course it's easier uh, to, to pick up here on the PCI. The sizing also will become much easier uh, uh, and uh, much more accurate, which we'll look at in a little bit as well. So in uh, th this, uh, this is also another type of flow we'll look at a little bit uh, later, but just to mention that in general, there's, there's fewer groups that are re required when using the phase currents imaging technique. Uh, so defects uh, as uh, with conventional TFM typically we would do, uh, we would need more modes to image something like this. So maybe a 3T would be used. Uh, but with PCI, we realized that TT and 4T has actually shown to be uh, very effective uh, with this technique. So uh, potentially less modes could be needed for imaging the same flaws. So now some uh, results on uh, actual flaws. So this is uh, HTHA block simulated, and uh, this is something we've shown before uh, last year, actually at ASNT. We showed some uh, early test results uh, using MATLAB just to confirm uh, the technique. So when we, uh, the, our scientists uh, worked on uh, developing this technique, this is uh, where we were at. We found out that conventional TFM was not able to pick much uh, from it, but we were able to see some defects uh, using the phase current imaging, again, because we're looking at uh, the very, very small diffractors uh, instead of trying to find a big reflector that will give us a high amplitude. So there's nothing there to give us a high amplitude, but there was enough uh, to diffract uh, the sound and uh, be picked up by the phase shift uh, that we were seeing in phase currents. Uh, now we implemented it in the equipment and uh, directly in the equipment, that's what we could see from the same block. So this is conventional TFM. Actually, we were able to pick a bit better uh, with, uh, this, uh, with this setup than we were able uh, to see on the MATLAB. But uh, the PCI has shown much more indication that uh, we didn't know were, were there uh, previously. And so uh, you can see, see the difference between here and here. It's hard to tell. Am I looking at noise or there's actually something here? With here, it's very clear that the, the, the area that is the noise versus the area of relevant indications. And of course, still picking those uh, two reflectors uh, that, were, that were right here and that was on the previous slide as well. So very promising results when it comes to HEHA because again, those, uh, the high, uh, high temperature hydrogen attack has a typically very small uh, scatter, uh, very small reflectors or uh, micro fissuring. And so uh, PCI seems to show a, a lot of benefit there to be able to pick up those small scatterers. That's the uh, flaw we looked at a little bit earlier. This is actually a hook crack. Uh, in a long seam ERW weld in carbon steel. So the entire uh, hook crack can be seen with using only one mode. So that's what we were looking at. Only the TTN uh, uh, mode were, was, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the 4T mode was used here. And where conventional uh, had to look at uh, two different modes to be able to size uh, this hook crack properly. So that's also a benefit, again, uh, being able to uh, see a bit more, but also size more, more accurately uh, using, than, than using, uh, uh, by using the tip uh, diffraction. Another example here for long seam and ERW in carbon steel as well. And so here, well, it's a branch crack uh, using TT. And uh, here, this is the conventional TFM and the phase coherence. Uh, again, you know, shows it shows a bit more details about the size uh, and the shape also of the crack and uh, the tip diffractions uh, for, again, a better sizing. 
So this is uh, H2S in carbon steel. This is something that uh, TFM was, uh, was a good application for. Uh, and we can see that we have very good results, of course, uh, still with uh, the TFM, but we can see just a little bit more uh, when using the PCI. Now I want to I want to take a, a small break or a, a throwback to PAUT. Um, PAUT still being a, a very you know an advanced technique, very effective technique. Uh, I feel like sometimes it's uh, like at the Olympics. You know, you, we need to have a normal person standing next to the athletes to understand how much of a difference there is. And so that's a little bit what I'm trying to do here. Uh, so this is PAUT, and I say throwback, but this is still heavily used, of course, and one still one of the very good technique to, um, to look at H2S. So here we're looking at a blister uh, for that same, same example that we were looking at earlier. So we can see uh, where the, the blister is uh, on the depth, and we can see there's some connectivity too and some stepwise cracking. Uh, but uh, when, when we look at the difference between PAUT and the PCI, uh, this is where really it starts to shine. Like we can see uh, again, like just that very nice stepwise cracking, uh, connecting uh, to the, the, the back wall uh, and, uh, and, and just much more details than what we were able to see in the PAUT, a much better signal to noise ratio again. Uh, so it, it, it's an additional tool that can really help in uh, characterizing the flaws. Now, going back for uh, some weld defects, so porosity in stainless steel in this one. This is actually a block that we had for a very long time. We knew that about this little indication there, uh, but with amplitude, that was the only thing really making it back to the probe that had enough of a reflector to uh, get back in uh, to, uh, to the unit. And as we started using PCI, we can really see now uh, versus the noise, like there's really something going on here, much more smaller scatterers, again, very small natural defects that were occurring in the part that we were able to pick up. Um, as well, of course, as the larger reflector, but these very small uh, porosities in the uh, stainless steel showed up really well. So stainless steel typically being a bit more grainy, as we can see here, also a bit more noisy in the TFM, and it's the same for the phased array, but uh, PCI really is enjoying this, <laughs> so it can do the difference between what is coherent and what isn't coherent. So talking about sizing, uh, as we mentioned a little bit uh, earlier, so one of the advantage of the uh, PCI technology is that uh, sharp tips uh, from the crack and other defects will diffract the sound. And so this will, these uh, signal are um, rarely distinguishable in, in uh, conventional uh, TFM or PAUT. And so with PCI or phase current imaging, these diffraction signals are highly coherent and uh, then therefore much more visible. So similar to a TOF technique or time of flight diffraction, these tip diffraction can be used for uh, much more accurate sizing, and, uh, but also has the advantage of being a, an image, uh, a 2D image. So this means the defect can be uh, sized in, in, in both directions because of that image. So the reference cursor here is being placed on the peak of the highest point of the crack, uh, for that A scan and uh, to find the height. And of course, uh, since it is connected to the ID, then the other cursor is uh, at the bottom. And uh, the, because the tips of the crack uh, diffract, the peak of the signal can be used for uh, sizing instead of using a technique like 6dB, where again, uh, if the uh, amplitude correction was not done properly or the time uh, correction gain wasn't applied properly, uh, could could oversize or undersize uh, a defect. So another, uh, the same for the same hook crack we're just showing here with the reading, placing the cursors on the max uh, and at the base, of course, because it's connected. And uh, so three readings will be the height, the width, and the total length of the crack. So the peak remains constant regardless of the palette of zoom that we are using, because we are using the A scan here. 
Similarly here for lack of uh, sidewall fusion. And so uh, same ways of replacing the cursors on the hot spot that we would call uh, at the end of the indication, making it very easy here to size. So uh, just as a comparison and to, to, uh, to go back again on conventional TFM sizing. So because conventional TFM is using it's an amplitude base here, uh, the, we, we need to use something like a 6 dB drop. And so uh, again, uh, sizing a notch-like defect needs a semi-empirical consideration that could be easily misled by a calibration process, as we were mentioning, if the TCG is not properly um, executed, or uh, by attenuation in the material if there's no, no TCG. Uh, and so, um, so that's why it's going to vary a lot sometimes in, in sizing if not done properly. As opposed to here, where there's uh, not, nothing to be done with the gain, you know, there's no amplitude relevant information here. It's only the image of the phase, so it's really easy to know where the crack, uh, the tip starts and ends, and so there's no amplitude adjustment that is required for sizing. Uh, and uh, the gain can be set to zero or not being touched at all because again, uh, there's there's no uh, no effect there on the amplitude. So in conclusion, uh, there is, of course, advantages and limitations to every techniques. Uh, some of the advantages for the phase current imaging is, of course, the high, very high sensitivity, sensitivity to narrow and uh, point-like reflectors uh, that are very diffractive, uh, so uh, small, very small cracks or uh, small porosities. It allows also the accurate sizing much more uh, efficiently and with less um, chances for mistakes. Since it is not based on uh, the signal amplitude, again, not necessarily, no calibration would be necessarily needed or no gain adjustment would be required for the sizing. Uh, and uh, it's making uh, sizing of the notch much easier, much faster, and uh, more importantly, more accurate in comparison to the conventional uh, TFM. The image interpretation is no longer uh, based on a, a calibrated, amplitude calibrated signal. But there's also some drawbacks. Uh, so the low signal to noise ratio on very uh, clean materials. So again, the calibration block might not necessarily uh, show uh, perfectly or, or as well as TFM. Uh, so it, it really needs to have a little bit of noise to, uh, to perform. And um, the inspectors are simply not used to look at something else than something that is amplitude based. So we're very used to uh, to have our eyes tuned for amplitude. So it's gonna, we're going to have to change a little bit our, our eyes, our mindset about uh, looking at those images uh, and what it really means uh, when there is a change in the face rather than looking uh, at this through amplitude. So this is it. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question or would like to get in touch, please feel free to scan uh, this QR code, take a picture of it, uh, and, and reach out. Thank you for your attention.